Top 10 Bizarre Facts About the Late Queen Elizabeth II's Death Hi there welcome to Topics World. Please give your suggestions in the comment section. The Queen Has Passed Away Queen Elizabeth II passed away at Balmoral Castle in Scotland on September 8, 2022. The reign of Elizabeth II began in 1952. Over the course of that period, she completely embraced that label. You might be surprised to learn that we already know what will happen once the adored king has passed away. Governments and media throughout the world have been getting ready for it for many years. Number 10. Previous royal deaths have gone terribly. Previous royal funerals and rituals, despite their reputation for pomp and ceremony, have been a complete failure. The undertakers were inebriated at Princess Charlotte's burial. At his coronation, George IV had to hire prize fighters to stop fights between distinguished but unruly subjects. When the Duke of York was laid to rest in 1827, it was so chilly that the foreign secretary had rheumatic fever and the Bishop of London passed away. Even the coronation of Queen Victoria was lackluster. The coronation ring didn't fit, and the clergy missed their lines. There have been serious errors in royal rituals as recently as 2002. Over 250 commercial radio stations were unable to break the news of the Queen Mother's passing. The idea was to automatically issue an obit signal as soon as the news was made public. They would be able to break the news among the earliest broadcasters as a result. However, someone accidentally hit the wrong button, preventing the notification from being issued, which one insider aptly referred to as an incredible cock-up. As a result, one of the greatest news stories of the year was entirely unknown to 258 radio stations. Number 9. The planning reminds me of a spy movie. The code words Hyde Park Corner were used to deliver the news of the death of the last British monarch in 1952. This was done so that switchboard operators couldn't find out about news before it happened and tell people. The code term Operation Tay Bridge was also used to allude to the Queen Mother's burial arrangements. Operation London Bridge is the moniker given to Elizabeth II's last arrangements, which have the feel of a playbook for a top-secret military operation. If the London Bridge falls down while the Prime Minister is still asleep, public workers will wake him or her up. This mysterious code word denotes that the Queen is deceased, but we are curious as to what they will say if the real London Bridge falls. If the Queen perishes in a bridge collapse, things can become rather perplexing. The information will then be communicated to the 15 foreign states where the Queen is the head of state through closed channels from a secret location by the Foreign Office's Global Response Center. The Commonwealth's 36 member countries, where the Queen serves as a symbolic head of state, will also be informed of the news. For all this secrecy, it's likely that the rest of the world will learn about it shortly. Within an hour of the Prime Minister's departure, the Press Association will learn of her passing. Number 8. The largest funeral in human history will take place. The code words Hyde Park Corner were used to deliver the news of the death of the last British monarch in 1952. This was done so that switchboard operators couldn't find out about news before it happened and tell people. Operation Tay Bridge was the covert name for the planning for the Queen Mother's burial. Operation London Bridge is the moniker given to Elizabeth II's last arrangements, which have the feel of a playbook for a top-secret military operation. People working for the government will wake up the Prime Minister and tell him, London Bridge is down. This mysterious code word denotes that the Queen is deceased, but we are curious as to what they will say if the real London Bridge falls. If the Queen perishes in a bridge collapse, things can become rather perplexing. 
The information will then be communicated to the 15 foreign states where the Queen is the head of state through closed channels from a secret location by the Foreign Office's Global Response Center. The Commonwealth's 36 member countries, where the Queen serves as a symbolic head of state, will also be informed of the news. For all this secrecy, it's likely that the rest of the world will learn about it shortly. Within an hour of the Prime Minister's departure, the Press Association will learn of her passing. Number 7. The funeral service will be conducted in a manner reminiscent of the 1800s. Britain will basically turn the clock back 200 years by using all the tradition, pomp, and ceremony it can manage. The streets of London will be filled with horses, carriages, guns, and classic military attire, and the sound of ringing church bells will fill the air. Old procedures, customs, and rituals will be resurrected. Some people haven't been seen for more than 60 years, if ever. Even so, the formal announcement will be made by a royal footman putting a note telling onlookers of the monarch's passing on the palace gates. This resurgence of outdated practices extends to the media as well, as the BBC will activate RATS. This is an acronym for Radio Alert Transmission System or Royal About to Snuff It, as it is frequently humorously referred to in BBC offices. RATS has earned a legendary status among BBC employees. It was created during the Cold War to resist an attack on Britain's communications network. Most workers have only witnessed it in action during testing, and many have never even seen it in action. Remember that this is a country where the ink on the parchment made of goatskin from which the inaugural address would be read recently caused the inauguration of the parliament to be postponed by several days. The UK is not scared to appear dated in order to put up a good display. The monarch is aware of the value of traditional theatrics. You have to see me to believe me is said to be one of her catchphrases, which is funny because it shows that the queen has a lot of catchphrases. Number 6. Everything has been meticulously planned out in advance. The planning for Operation London Bridge is precise, frequently to the minute. For instance, the day after the queen's passing, Prince Charles will be formally declared king at 11 a.m. Big Ben will sound at 9 a.m. on the day of the funeral, and the casket will arrive at Westminster Abbey at 11 a.m. Other governments have their own opaque processes outside of Britain. The federal government in Ottawa only lets cabinet members and top advisors talk about its plan for getting rid of the Queen. Additionally, Almost all media outlets have procedures and systems in place to be ready in the event that the current monarch assumes room temperature. Radio stations feature collections of music that are suitable for gloomy occasions. According to Chris Price of BBC Radio 1, if you ever hear the song Haunted Dance Hall, Nursery Remix, by Sabres of Paradise, in the top video, a terrible incident or significant fatality has just happened. On the final day, any risque comedy can be quickly removed from TV shows. The majority of sarcastic or dark humor will be taken off the air, although comedy will still be presented. Worldwide media companies are prepared to go. For instance, CNN has a number of taped packages about the life of the Queen that may be aired as soon as they learn of Elizabeth's passing. There are rumors that British media outlets like The Times have up to 11 days' worth of material ready. Sky News and ITN do regular drills and rehearsals where they refer to the Queen as Mrs. Robinson, and several networks have deals with the royal government for exclusive interviews. Everything has been meticulously planned out in advance. Number 5. Everyone will face judgment for every small error. Every broadcaster should be ready since they are aware that they will be subject to intense scrutiny. Newsreader Peter Sisson was wearing a red tie at the time of the Queen Mother's death, so the national media went after him right away for being disrespectful. At the very least, he was tied or caught red-handed. Additionally, Sissons and the BBC were charged with not providing enough details and portraying it as just another news item. 
The tragedy has a significant impact on how the British media portrays celebrity deaths. Now that we live in the social media era, the criticism will be even harsher. Most news outlets keep formal black clothing on standby around the clock in case of an unexpected death. News anchors were advised to dress in black after learning of Queen Elizabeth II's poor health. By the time the Queen's death was announced, black ties, suits, and other accessories were often seen in the news. Networks will merge, programmers will halt, and scripts will be read aloud. The national song will then play and the royal standard will be shown. To avoid any accusations of disrespect on the part of the networks, all comments and discussion will be held off until later. Number 4. The British national identity will be completely changed. Queen Elizabeth's identity is central to large areas of British society. She became Queen of the United States while Truman was President of the United States and Stalin was President of the Soviet Union. Her image appears on British money, and her emblem can be found on police and military clothing. The British national song, God Save the Queen, is actually titled after her. Everything will have to be altered. The national anthem will be changed to God Save the King. Passports will be redone, military insignia will be updated, new stamps will be created, and even simple things like mailboxes will have to be changed. Mailboxes in Scotland were vandalized after Elizabeth II became queen. Because England and Scotland were separate at the time, Scotland never had a Queen Elizabeth I. The Scots were enraged that English history was seen as more significant than theirs. Number 3. It will cost the economy billions of dollars. The immediate cost of the Queen's demise will be enormous. The economy of the United Kingdom will suffer billions of pounds in missed working hours, not to mention the cost of the burial and the next coronation. As a mark of respect and sadness, stores and banks across the country will close for 12 days following Elizabeth's death. Both the funeral of the Queen and the coronation of Prince Charles will be national holidays. This will cost the economy between £1.2 billion and £6 billion. While the anticipated flood of visitors may offset some of these expenditures, Britain's economy would suffer as a result. Every time someone talks about Brexit, the pound loses value, so the death of a well-known national icon is sure to cause some economic worry. Number 2. The Commonwealth Might Disintegrate The Queen is not only the ruler of the UK but also of a dozen other nations, including Canada, Australia, and Jamaica. She also serves as the leader of the Commonwealth, which is composed of countries like South Africa and India. Approximately one-third of the world's population is united by her image and influence, nevertheless, her passing might mean the end of that togetherness. There has long been a strong Republican movement in Australia. A new, less well-liked king may be enough to tip it. Number 1. The United Kingdom may become a republic. A new king without the same history, stability, or recognition might alter the popularity of the monarchy among the British population, despite the majority of studies suggesting otherwise. According to historian Greg Jenner, the contemporary support for the monarchy is greatly influenced by the general public's adoration for Queen Elizabeth. She is very amazing. Few people think that without her, the monarchy would suddenly crumble, though there is conjecture that popular support will gradually decline. Jeremy Corbyn, the left-leaning opposition leader at the moment, is actually a Republican. In other words, he wants to make the UK a republic. We don't think he backs the GOP. Thanks for watching.